flying ambulances. Europe saw the first genuine application of air evacuation in 1870. In the Franco-Prussian War, balloons were used as a means of escape during the siege of Paris. Even then, the speed of medical treatment was recognized as a critical factor in saving lives. What was not recognized for the next 50 years was the dynamic potential of evacuation by air. In 1910, Captain George Gossman and Lieutenant A.L. Rhodes, U.S. Army Medical Corps, used their own funds to build the very first patient-carrying aircraft. Said Captain Gossman, I clearly see that thousands of hours and ultimately thousands of patients would be saved through the use of airplanes in air evacuation. In World War I, several Jenny aircraft were modified to take single litters in protected cockpits. Air evacuation by helicopter started in Burma near the end of World War II. In Korea, air evacuation became the method of choice. But it was not until Vietnam that helicopters truly demonstrated their ability to speed huge numbers of wounded soldiers to aid stations and hospitals. The UH-1D helicopter, affectionately known as the Huey, is the preferred and authorized helicopter in all of the air ambulance units. The mere sight of a Huey raises the morale of the ground troops. They've seen it save their buddies' lives and know it will be there quickly when needed. The aircraft is normally flown at 120 miles an hour and has a flight endurance of three hours. External loads of medical supplies and equipment weighing up to 4,000 pounds can be airlifted. This capability permits rapid movement of whole blood and critically needed medical supplies. Even movement of complete medical specialist teams when the situation demands. The helicopter has a firm grip on the atmosphere, its natural environment. Much of the all-weather capability and many of the flight safety features are due to the U.S. Aeromedical Research Laboratory, Fort Rucker, Alabama. Its airborne tenacity has brought it anywhere, place, or time. Low, fast, perching quickly, loading up to eight casualties, and starting in-flight medical treatment. Not even a non-existent landing pad deters the helicopter. Using an external hoist, cable pickups can be made from 250 feet above the jungle floor. Vietnam has brought home the meaning of the lesson first learned a hundred years ago, the value of air evacuation. In Japan, conditions often require transporting patients by ambulance or specially converted bus. Under the best of circumstances, highway travel is uncomfortable to the patient and can be tedious as well as dangerous. Even on good roads, the jolts of normal stop-and-go traffic are painfully intensified in the wounded man and can easily deteriorate the condition of critical patients. The medical helicopter in Japan has shown the non-combat utilization of this rescuer. As air evacuation delivers patients above traffic, its efficiency increases proportionately with distance from the hospital.
mast operation? Mast, military assistance to safety and traffic. A six month demonstration of a Department of Transportation concept. Involved are the 507th Helicopter Ambulance Company of Fort Sam Houston, Texas, and the Alamo Area Council of Governments. The 507th maintains a ready alert aircraft and crew, which will be airborne three minutes after receiving the request for evacuation. In conjunction with local police and civilian medical treatment centers, dust-off crews are saving civilian lives. The most obvious application is in highway accidents, but they can be equally effective in any disaster, natural or man-made. Floods, fires, explosions, all are opportunities for air evacuation. Pilot's radio call assures that the receiving hospital will be ready to provide immediate and definitive care. are ended. The time between injury and health has been cut. The risk of further harm from traffic delays, even a second accident involving a conventional ambulance, has been reduced. In place of that is a patient transportation system as modern as the hospital care he will receive. 